back rolls. Hello and welcome back for another episode of Nellyville Reviews RuPaul's Drag Race. So glad that you've made it back for another episode. Before we talk about the dolls, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Go ahead and subscribe, share, thumbs up, tell your cats, dogs, grandparents, all that good stuff. Before, before, again, before we get into it, can we get some Kleenex? to the set of RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, I know this has already been, you know, filmed a year ago, but what was, what is going on with all the crying? Oh my gosh, it's like every week, these people get a, just, they're just, would y'all please stop crying? Lux was crying, Lux was the only one that had a good reason to cry this week because Lux got a very nice video message from his family. And so Lux starts crying, and this is like probably the first time we've seen Lux cry. Someone says, I think it was Marsha, Marsha goes, I just love this so much because I feel like we're seeing the real you. Baby, why, why, why do we need to be crying for it to be real? I just, I, I don't understand what the, what the delusion theory is about Lux. When Lux is out here thriving and confident and, 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 and serving, they're like, where's all this confidence coming from? And then Lux finally breaks down, has some, some tears of joy, and they're like, we finally see the real you. What? This week, they had an interview challenge. There was no mini challenge this week, fine, whatever. I don't know what they're doing over there at the world, at the world of Wanda. I don't know what they're doing, but it's fine. They had the breakup in three different groups. So one group interviewed Charo, um, Frankie Grande, I uh, love Connie. The group that got to interview Love Connie was Selena, Lux, and Mistress, okay? Sasha and Marsha got Charo. And then Lucy, Anitra, and Malaysia got Frankie Grande. Within the interviews, each girl got to pick what type of segment they wanted to do. There was a cooking segment, there was a sit down segment, and then there was like a moving around, walking type of segment, or in a golf cart for Lux. So it was a fun challenge. It was nice to see the girls do this interview challenge. I like these, but the, the mistake that the ones who did bad, in my opinion, the mistake is, is that they were trying to take it too seriously. Love Connie was like great and everything, but she really was bulldozing over the girls trying to interview. And you know, that's part of the challenge is how do you interview a big personality? Because you know, if they're gonna go on to have careers as uh, drag queens of the world, and they want to get hired for gigs where you're doing red carpet events, where you might have a TV show or something like that. We need to see, can you handle a huge personality? Now, I feel like, um, I feel like Lux did the best job with Love Connie. I think, I felt like it was two friends hanging out. They're in this golf cart. Connie's driving all crazy. Lux is still asking the questions. The laughs felt genuine. I felt the chemistry. I was most interested in that interview. <laughs> Selena, you could just see it all over her face. The nerves were there. It was nothing about her that exuded confidence. And she was cutting Connie off. Like I know like when you do interviews, you prepare, you have your notes and stuff, but you can't be so glued to your questions that you're not listening. When you're interviewing, you need to be listening. You go in with a with a guideline, you go in with an outline, you go in with some talking points, but you need to listen because you might end up with something juicier, with something more entertaining than what you originally planned to ask. And then mistress, child, and she, missed, okay, so Selena had the sit down interview and Mistress had the uh, had the cooking segment with Love Connie. And I, I think that, I don't know what, ha what happened to Mistress. And I feel like Love Connie was trying to get Mistress to kind of relax the loop. You should have, you should have leaned into that wackiness. But you know what, when you, when you talk, when you do all the talking and the stuff, of course, who's gonna be happy there in the bottom? But I'm sure a, a lot more of the blow came from the fact that you just sat up here and did all of this. And then you couldn't immediately couldn't back it up. 
So then let's move on to Sasha and Marsha who interviewed Charo. Now Charo is very fun. We love Charo. But the challenge with Charo was the, the accent. The thick accent is like, what are you saying? So Marsha did a sit down interview and Marsha, bless her heart, was trying so hard. And I, I feel like if Marsha was with someone else or was able to understand Charo a little better, I think that she would have did good. I mean, bless her heart, she was, Marsha was trying some points for effort with that. <laughs> Sasha was, has had a little bit of nerves. After she kind of got her footing, Sasha, she did the, uh, she did the cooking segment too. But when she finally caught her rhythm and she ends up, she throws the cards, her little question, her little cue card, she throws them over her head and she just kind of leans into being in the moment with Charo. And it actually turned out pretty cute. It, it was it was decent. We do the Frankie Grande, okay? And uh, Lucy did the sit down interview. And honestly, I don't know if it's that I'm just annoyed with Lucy. Look, Lucy's drag is great, but at least the way that they're editing her on the show, I'm just annoyed. And maybe that is clouding my judgment from her actual performance. But for me, I didn't enjoy the interview. I felt like it was fake. I didn't like the fake laughing. It felt like she was trying really hard. It didn't give, but they loved it. Anitra, I liked Anitra's segment with Frankie. Now Anitra and Frankie, they were like doing like a little jog. You know, they would, would do a little, little power walk outside. And Anitra was, did really well. And she was engaging in the physical activity without getting distracted or without losing her train of thought. And then you had Malaysia. Chow. Okay, first of all, Malaysia, what were you, what were you wearing? Malaysia looked like she worked in the accounting department for a small family owned business that is in a small town with a population of uh, 3,500. And I was very confused. And the, the wig alone, I couldn't get past the what, what, what was that wig? And then she just shut down in an interview. Wild thing is, is of the three people to interview, Frankie was the best one to interview because Frankie was actively trying to help the girls out. So let's talk about the runway looks. Okay, so the theme for today was a night of a thousand Beyonce's. I, I have a lot of feelings about this runway, but um, let me just say this. One would think that this would at least be a, 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 an elevated, nice fashion runway. But I, I'm, I, 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 mm. oh, it was a squirrel over there. Let's, let's just look at the looks. And I'm gonna be honest, everybody look tacky. Okay, Anitra, what is this? Lucy. This was probably the one that really got on my nerves. So Lucy did the look where Beyonce did the uh, baby bump reveal, right? The wig is okay. The makeup is okay. But she revealed the baby bump, and I'm like, where's the bump? Maybe Lucy was trying to be accurate with the depiction of the bump. But when you are on stage under the lights, and you have on black pants, and you are a man, okay? You need to make the bump big. You need to make it obvious like, hey, baby on board. So it's, it's a big no for me, but oh, they lived. All right, Lux Noir London. Now, I didn't hate this look, but I wasn't really living for the makeup. And it was something about the tights that threw it off for me, but I do, appreciate this look because I'm, this is a look that has been worn by a lot of greats not just Beyonce but it's also before Beyonce it was worn by RuPaul it was worn by some other people but one of those people before even Beyonce wore this outfit um, RuPaul have had worn it before so it was a cute little uh, history behind that outfit now Malaysia baby doll fox um this this was one of the ones that the outfit wise that I could actually tolerate, but what ruined it for me was that wig. 
Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Now, Marsha's look was fine, but it didn't really look like the reference. Like it did, but it just didn't. Then we have Mistress. Now this is probably going to be my favorite look. So Mistress did something really cute and actually did Beyonce from Destiny's Child and she included Michelle and Kelly. I thought that that was really clever. It was very camp. It was funny and the dress on her looks really good. Then we have Selena. No. Immediately no. Selena Estes. Okay, I just, I had to get that out of my system. But I like the wig, but not with this outfit. And then she came out with the, all the little Grammys, but they're like little RuPaul heads. It was a great idea, but I could have done without it. This to me looks like if I had a five-year-old and I wanted to do a princess theme, and you know how you can hire the princesses to come and perform for the kid's birthday party. This is... If she showed up and said, I'm here to play Belle, I would have said, hi, Belle. The party's in the back. And last, we have Sasha Colby. That wig, hideous. What was going on with the wigs tonight? The outfit is fine, but I just feel like just something about it, it looked, it, 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 it looked cheap. They loved it. I, Sasha ended up winning. This is her third win, second week in a row. I didn't agree. I feel like Lux should have won. So in the bottom, you have Selena again in the bottom. Selena is in the bottom again with Malaysia Baby Doll Fox. So they lip sync to single ladies, right? Everyone, including myself, knows or knew the choreography to single ladies. It's really not that impressive. As soon as the song starts, Selena immediately busts into the choreography of single ladies. And one might say, oh, that's so great. To me, I feel like, girl, what are you doing? I need, I'm gonna need, for you. like, what, like, that didn't impress me. It was predictable. A few bars later, Malaysia joins in and starts doing. Now, Malaysia had already given up on herself. It was very clear. And even when the judges were uh, talking to them and going over their performance, Malaysia was very already defeated. She was she had already packed her stuff self up and gone home mentally. So she has this moment and she like gets emotional and stuff on stage and she's like explaining like, oh, I'm just da 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 da. But the thing that tickled me was like she had this vulnerable moment. She opened up and then RuPaul was just like, okay, thank you. So you I, and I, I just thought that was so funny. So. I don't know if they edited out something that RuPaul said, but to me, it came off as RuPaul was like, baby, if you don't want to be here, then you going home. The guest judge this week was uh, T.S. Madison. So on the Untucked episode, T.S. Madison goes back, you know, the, the guest judges go backstage to talk to the girls or whatever. And so T.S. Madison goes backstage and she, the first, one of the first things T.S. Madison said was what I was thinking, which was, what's with all the low energy? Why is everyone so down? I'm and she specifically uh, has a conversation with Malaysia. And she was like, especially you. She was like, what's going on? Talk to me. Like, I'm like, yeah, because Malaysia's energy was just like, like, baby, go home at this point. And anyways, back to the lip sync. That lip sync was crunching. They both were weak. And really, even Bianca Del Rio said it. She, They should have both went home. So... Needless to say, Malaysia ended up having to Sasha home. So congratulations to you, Sasha and Malaysia. I hope that you are feeling much better now. And uh, I, I hope that uh, maybe you can come back for an All-Stars. I would love to see you on an All-Stars when maybe you kind of work through some things because I see the potential. For that, thank you for watching. Subscribe, follow, share, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah. Bye.